Before we sing this last worship song is remind everybody that next Wednesday we're not going to be in sanctuary here we're going to be gathering together over at uh, Pizza Plus in Jamestown and we're going to be doing a cash mob and that's going to start at 6 o'clock and we're going to be blessing a local business in town and they know we're coming and they're excited that we're coming they even felt the spirit of the Lord come on them and they're not even saved yet because we're coming. Amen. 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 So it's exciting. Now I want you guys to plan on being there if you can. Amen. You may not have any monies to be able to buy pizza, but come anyway. Just come and be in fellowship with us. We'll have plenty. God always has enough. Hey, if he took if he took five fish and two loaves, he could take a pizza and make it go around the world. Hallelujah. But we want you to come. Uh, the most important thing is being there, okay? Your presence is required. 
we, we want you guys to be there. We want to be, we want to let our light shine into our community and let them see that there's Christians, there's a church that is really concerned about the success of their business. And we want to be there to bless them, all right? And so that's happening this next Wednesday. I wanted to let that be known. And then also remember this, that on March 13th, that's a week from this Saturday, say March 13th. March 13th. Uh, young people say March 13th. Uh, Saturday. March 13th at, at 6 o'clock, we're going to be showing um, a movie. It's a movie of Jeremy Camp's story. I Still Believe is going to be played right here, Saturday, March 13th at 6 o'clock. What we want you to do is invite your friends. Invite your neighbors. Have people come. We're going to be having some hot dogs and refreshments and that sort of thing. And then we're going to show the movie. It's an outreach. And we're going to be getting people to come and watch this movie. And if you haven't seen I Still Believe yet, Man, this is a really good movie. You're going to enjoy it very, very much. Hallelujah. So that's March 13th. Okay. With all of that said, now we want to go back into worship. And then after this song, you guys can be dismissed as teenagers into your class. Sleep. 
Come on. Come on. Praise the Lord. That was incredible. So awesome tonight. Aren't you glad to be a child of God? All right. All of the teenagers can be dismissed back to their group tonight. Thank God for each and every one of you being here. Amen. The rest of you can be seated except for Margie Wiley. She's coming up and giving the word tonight. Let's give her a hand of appreciation as she comes this evening. Amen. All right, Lord, we just thank you and praise you for this night, Lord God, for each and every person here, Lord, and for this word, Lord God, and I just pray that the hearts would receive what you would want them to receive from this, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. All right, and the title of my message is, Jesus is Longing for You. Amen. The Christian life should be a life of longing for Jesus. And when we think of longing, many times we think about things we want or desire or things that we need. And we might even think about, like, we want um, a good job or we might desire to have a family or a relationship. Or we might be struggling with an addiction and we, we want to be set free from that. Um, maybe we have a physical thing in our body that we want to be healed of or a past wound that we'd like to be set free from, and um, we might even want to be used by God or have a longing to do something for the Lord, and even like this message, I was supposed to bring it in November, and so I longed to bring it back in November, but here it is now, right? And so God's timing is perfect, and when we trust in his timing, um, you know, he makes it even better than it was before, and um, so, and uh, when we make him the king of our lives, then, then there's a blessing in that for us. And it's not always easy to trust in the Lord and his timing and in the things that, you know, the ways that he wants our life to go. But how many of us had prayed a prayer and then later on, when it didn't get answered, we say, thank you, Jesus. There was a reason for it. And then we see it, right? So praise the Lord. His ways are above our ways. And uh, so... He will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. He might not give us what we want, but he'll give us what we need. And sometimes we might even stomp our feet with God and say, you know, I, this is the way I want it, and try to control what God's going to do for us, right? So, but when we give it over to him, then that's when the blessings will flow. And when we reflect on our longings, the most important thing for us to long for is what Jesus wants for our life. And uh, so in preparing for this message, I decided to go to Google <laughs> and look up the meaning of longing for God. And this is what, what Google says, to love God with your heart. And we know the word of God says to love God with all of our hearts goes on to say, to love, to long for God means to desire God more than other things. To hunger for him more than food. Oh, now we're getting serious. To thirst for him more than drink. To seek what Jesus longs for more than anything should be the desire of our hearts. So what is Jesus longing for from you, from me? That's our personal application. And I'm going to go to the Word. And if you have your Bible, um, if you open it up to Isaiah 55, I'm going to read verses 1 through 9. All right. Ho, oh, everyone who thirst, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy, and eat. Yes, come, buy wine and milk 
without money and without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, the sure mercies of David. Indeed, I have given him as a witness to the people, a leader and commander for the people. Surely you shall call a nation you do not know, and nations who do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my ways are not your ways, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Amen? Hallelujah. So Jesus longs for us to come to him. And when we go to verse 1, it says, ho, oh, with an exclamation point, And he's trying to get our attention, right? So, and Jesus longs for us to come to him for salvation. And um, many of us in here are saved, maybe mo all of us, but there was a time when we weren't, and Jesus was longing for us to have that moment of salvation with him. And John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And he sends that appeal for us for our salvation. I'm going to share a little story to a, a moment that st has stood out in my mind. And uh, this was before I was saved and I was living a pretty dark life at that time, addicted and drugs and, and um, my life, I was not in a good spot, but, um, and I didn't even have food in the refrigerator. You know, I didn't have any money. I was kind of like in this scripture, come to the waters, you who have no money, right? So across the street from where I lived, there was an estate sale. And I went over to the estate sale knowing I didn't have any money, but I was looking, I was searching for something, right? So I'll never forget it. And I walk in and it's this duplex and uh, there's all these tables set up with all these items perfectly set on all these tables. And just a bunch, just the whole room was filled. And there was a, a man in there, and he was real tall. I remember what he looked like still to this day, and just real nice dressed. And um, so I, you know, sparked up a conversation with him, and he, was, he told me that he was having an estate sale. It was his, his mom who had... Um, gone on to be with the Lord, that she loved Jesus, and these were her items. And so there was no price tags on the items. So I was looking, and there was a few items, and I was interested in them, and I said, how much for this? And he gave a price, and I, I knew that I couldn't afford it because I didn't have no money, right? So, and, uh, so I kept looking, and then I came across these two plaques. They were wooden plaques, and they were very majestic and they had a nature picture on them, and they had scriptures. And I asked him, I said, how much for these pictures? And he said, they're free. I, whoa, free? And he said, yeah, free. He said, in fact, anything in here that represents the Lord Jesus Christ is free. So, guess what Margie did? <laughs> She left with those pictures and a couple of more because they were free. <laughs> and um, here I was living, you know, addicted to drugs, and I had those pictures. I immediately put those pictures on my wall. But there was a message in that. 
All right, and I didn't get saved right then, but there was a message in that, and it was an impact, and I still remember it to this day. And so here I had those scriptures on my wall, and you know, people come into my house that weren't saved, and I wasn't saved, and it, I didn't get saved right away, but it was still a moment in that before I was saved. So Jesus longs for us to come to him. The second point is Jesus longs for us to have a closer relationship with him for those of us that are saved. And I'm going to reference a scripture or verse 2. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? And as born-again believers, and even people who aren't born, but, you know, we could go out and we can want things that we think are going to satisfy us and spend our wages on things that aren't going to really satisfy us, like the Lord and those worldly items. Sometimes we might think they're going to make us feel better. In fact, I've done that retail shopping thing, you know, that brand new top, and I'll admit I still do it from time to time. But (laughs) Jesus can provide for us those, the longings that we have like no other substance in this world. And Jesus longs to fill your needs. And that's also in verse 2. He wants to fill your needs with him. What are your needs? Physically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally? Remember, Jesus says, come to me and I will satisfy you. It's like, and, and he's also, he needs your permission. It's like that, that uh, famous picture of Jesus at the door, and there's no doorknob, okay, on this side of where he's at. You have to ask him to come in. Are you allowing him in? And if you are, are you allowing him to go into the deep places? He needs your permission. And, you know, you can say a prayer like, Lord, you know, I have this thing. Come into that place. Meet that need. Help me. Jesus longs for us to listen to him. In verse 3, the word says, Incline your ear and come to me. Hear, and your soul shall live. Jesus says, come to me and listen carefully to him. Listen to him for salvation, for today is the day for salvation because we're not promised tomorrow. Listen to him for your relationship with him. Eat what is good. Eat of the word. Be in fellowship with, with him. Listen to him for your soul and delight in his abundance. And listen to him for guidance. Hear and your soul shall live. When you listen, do I go to the left? Do I go to the right? No, go this way. All right. So, Jesus longs for an everlasting covenant with you. The second part of verse 3 says, and I will make an everlasting, everlasting covenant with you, the sure mercies of David. All right, I'm just going to be really transparent. When I came to that, I'm like, I don't know what the sure mercies of David are. Let's just skip over that part. Let's don't even bring that to the message, okay? But I said, okay, what is that? And it, it actually became like a golden nugget. All right? And so I had to dig, right? Just like a gold miner, right? We're in the gold country, right? You had, they have to dig to get to that gold. So I had to do some research (laughs) to find out what are the mercies of David. And so it was new revelation. I just thought of that this morning. You know, pastor's been saying new revelation, so it was a new revelation for me as long as I've been in the Word. I've never seen that before. So um, in that, Jesus is saying, come to the cross for an everlasting covenant with Jesus. 
And so in, in researching that, I kind of found another scripture in the Bible that has the mercies of David, Acts 13, 34. And it says, and that he raised him from the dead, no more to return to corruption. He has spoken this. I will give you the sure mercies of David. The New Living Version says, I will make an everlasting covenant with you. I will give you all the unfailing love I promised to David. The scripture is referring to David and the promise given to him by God. But it also shows us how his promises are true. And once God gives a promise, it cannot be broken. Also, we can reflect on the promise of the covenant God has given us with our Lord Jesus Christ. Because he came as a ransom for all. In further research on these sure mercies of David, I found a sermon by C.H. Spurgeon titled, The Sure Mercies of God. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Struck gold. <laughs> it's got to be good. <laughs> As quoted by C.H. Spurgeon in his sermon, he states, There was a covenant made with David, which was intended to be typical of another covenant. And David himself is that special type of that great king with whom God has made a covenant on behalf of his people. Surgeon goes on to say, we leave David somewhat in the background in our meditations tonight. We will only use him as a symbol of the great Christ in whom we rejoice. For God gives to us the sure mercies of David in Jesus Christ, his well-beloved son. David was a shadow of Jesus. Like surgeon stated, David is just a shadow. But God honored David in spite of all that he did, and God looked at him as a man after God's own heart. And all that David went through, he, but he, when he repented and he turned to the Lord and, and to God to be obedient, God honored him as a king. David is a good example as he was rejected just as Jesus was rejected. But we know that there is only one true king, and his name is Jesus. Amen? So Jesus is longing to be our king. And Jesus himself said he was the king of Jews. Luke 23.3 in the Amplified Class, Classic Edition, word says, So Pilate asked him, Are you the king of Jews? And he answered him, it is just as you say, I am. John, in Revelations 19.16, Jesus is given the full title, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And we have that promise. When we give our life to him and we're obedient, he's going to pour out our blessing. And we have that everlasting covenant in eternity. Are you allowing him to be your king, especially while we're here on earth? With your needs, your wants, the things that you long for in your life? All right, now, Jesus longs. And there's a, these are long, right? <laughs> Jesus longs to, uh, longs to crown you for his glory. Verse 4 and 5, he says, Indeed, I have given him as a witness to the people, a leader and commander for the people. Surely you shall call a nation you do not know, and nations you, who do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, and the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. So he crowns us with his glory. 
and Jesus bore the cross so that we could get a crown of salvation. He paid the price. And he blesses us so we can be a blessing to others and to partner with him for his kingdom. He also gives us, as believers, his authority, his righteousness, and power. His power, dunamis power. We're dynamite. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Ephesians 2.10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that he should walk in them, that we should walk in them. He also crowns us for eternity, and our earthly works have heavenly value. So Jesus himself said, greater works will we do, because we're on this side of the cross. John 14, 12, most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will also do, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to the Father and he went to the Father. He sent us the Holy Spirit. He's in us. We accept him. Ask Jesus into our heart. We have the Holy Spirit and greater things we can do. And that's a reference to verse 5. Jesus longs for us to seek him while he may be found. And this is important in these times, in the days that we're living in, right? So... Um, because we know that Jesus is coming soon, right? And it says here in verse 6, Seek the Lord while he may be found. There's a time when he might not be able to be found. And he is saying, call upon him while he is near. And he is near to us as believers during these times. If we seek him, he knows what we're going through, the spiritual battles that we're in. He is nearer than ever before. And he's near during crisis. He's saying to the backslider, if we have any here tonight, get right, right now. The tonight could be your night, right? And... The last point, finally, Jesus longs for us to reach the lost. Verse 7 re references that. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Amen. So now is the time for repentance. Now is the time to be saved. Now is the time to get close to Jesus. And now is the time to reach the lost. Hallelujah. Do you remember the day you got saved? Those who spoke into your life, who shared the word with you, for you to be able to receive that salvation, who freely gave so you could receive I think back to that gentleman. He didn't have to give those items away or say what he said, but he did. And I was in a dark place, and that light shined. You know, as we go to Pizza Plus next week, our light's shining. So what is Jesus saying to you when he says, Ho! Ho! <laughs> Everyone who is thirst, thirsty, come to the waters. What are your waters, right? And remember, Jesus is longing for you. Amen. That's it. Praise the Lord. That was good, Margie. We have a few minutes. A couple of things that she said that uh, sparked an interest in me. I just want to take a couple of minutes to give you a chance. You know, um, it really what I was hearing as Margie was speaking, I was hearing loud and clear the involvement of Holy Spirit in her life and in our lives. And I just wonder if, you, if there's some here that would like to share. One of the things that, the first thing that really impressed me in this message that really made me start thinking was, 
when she said she went across the street and that man that had all of those things there to sell in that, uh, what was it? It was a, um, an, estate, an estate sale. Um, those plaques that were free. Anything that belonged to Jesus or represented Jesus was free. But what I thought about was those impressions that Holy Spirit leads us into. Think about this, you guys. I doubt if there's anybody here tonight that didn't have something like that happen to their life. Or there's some type of connection, maybe before you were saved, I'm talking about. Before you were saved, something connected you to start thinking about that draw of Holy Spirit. And I just want to take a minute. If you have something like that that happened to you, that you, right off the bat, you know what it was. Um, why don't you share that real quick? Anybody? Yes. Ron. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Everybody know what the late great planet Earth was? That was a Hal Lindsey movie. Hal Lindsey was a great prophetic teacher in the 70s and uh, 80s, and it was a it was a movie uh, produced about a book that he wrote about the end of the world and all, how was, all the calamity was coming down on the world because of the judgment of God during the tribulation period. <laughs> yeah, that would, that's a real downer, even for a, Christ, even for a Christian. <laughs> Amen. You know, um, it wasn't that long ago. This, um, yeah, this year, began last year. Some of you have heard this story already, but um, I, was, I always get very reflective at the end of the year for the new coming year. And also, some assessment upon my own life about, you know, where I'm at now, where the Lord has brought me from, and what does the future hold. You know, we all kind of kind of go through those types of things. And I was thinking about the first impression on my life. I've had a few, but this is right there at the top. And uh, I was not a Christian, and my, uh, my roommate at that time was just fresh out of high school. Um, he was not a Christian either, but he grew up in a Christian home, and I did not. And um, we were invited over to his mother's house for dinner and this was close I think it might have been right around Thanksgiving and she gave me a gift and the gift was a Bible and the Bible was called the way and that was a paraphrase that was very popular um, in the early 70s and um, anyway I started thinking about that Bible it was my first Bible I remember ever possessing it was called the way a paperback book about that thick and uh, the, the Bible written in paraphrase. Anyway, I started desiring to, to have that Bible again. I don't know what happened. You know how we kind of graduate from our early Bibles and we get into the King James Bible and the Thompson Chain Bible and, you know, all of these study Bibles and we kind of graduate from Bible to Bible. So I don't know what ever happened to that Bible, but I really wanted one, wanted one again because I never really read it. I read little portions of it, but I never read it. But it had an impact because... I did read, I, I can still quote a scripture right now that I read from that Bible years and years ago. So what I did read, Holy Spirit had impacted in my soul. But, uh, so I started looking online for it and it was very expensive. It, it was w not worth what people, it was out, of course, way out of print. And you can't find them anymore. You can find them online, but they're really, really expensive. And so I just kind of forgot about it. And I was in this room right here and I was cleaning out the music room and filed and clean out a bunch of papers, and who would guess, but there was a brand new Bible called The Way sitting right on that shelf. And it was kind of like, God, you are amazing. You never cease to amaze me that you just knew my heart's desire and gave me this Bible back again. And so I, I took that Bible home, and, and I just kind of just been reading, you know, I'm about one-third way through the Bible already. Start reading at the, maybe not quite, but I'm pretty far along. And, uh, but it, it reminded me of that thing about those plaques. 
You know, something, God puts something before us or in our hands that just starts the journey spiritually in our soul to get there. And so that was mine for tonight. Someone else have a story like that or something that impressed you on your way to finding Jesus as your Savior? I've got some more. If you guys, I mean, I've, I've got quite a few. <laughs> but I'd like to hear somebody else. Yes, go ahead, Stan. Mm-hmm. They know, they, they, they see pops, they call me pops, they see pops with the Bible all the time. I mean, every, my son, Chad, he's next door neighbor, he comes in like 5.30 in the morning, you know, he comes walking in to, to you know, for, for something, tell me I, I need help taking the grandkids to school, and guess what that happened this morning? He came walking in, it was like 5.30 in the morning, my light was on, my little reading light right there at the front door, and guess what? I had my Bible in my lap, I'm reading the Bible. In my mind, I'm thinking... I'm witnessing to him. He's seeing, he's seeing the devotion of my life to the Lord. And I know it's having an impact on his life. And what you just said there, Stan, one of these days, my hope and prayer is that he'll say that. He's not living for the Lord right now. He's living far from the Lord. And, uh, but he knows the Lord. And uh, one of these days, he'll have that same testimony, I believe, that he'll be back with the Lord and say, man, I remember seeing my dad all the time whenever I went to his house. He had that Bible in his hands or in his lap or reading a Christian book, something, you know, impressive like that. These little things is what Holy Spirit involves with. The second thing was, and I really appreciated this, Margie, was um, that, that scripture that illuminated, you know, the, 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 the mercies of David. You know, I never have researched that either. And when you said that, I thought, wow, I've had an experience like that where Holy Spirit stops you. Have you guys had an experience like that where Holy Spirit stops you and says, why don't you just take a minute and search that meaning out? That's one I haven't. The Holy Spirit never stopped me. I just read through that. I just kind of, well, do you know the mercies of David? He's got a lot of mercy from God. But look how deep that took you, you know. And uh, I've had a similar experience with the word some, not very often, but once in a while. If we will just, um, you know, remember that Holy Spirit's leading us in reading, he'll do those types of things where he'll stop us and get us to dig a little bit deeper into the word and get that gold that you're talking about. Sometimes in the word of God, it does require us to stop. And what's, uh, what um, the psalmist said is a Selah moment, where you stop and ponder and consider what you're reading. And so you're not just reading it. I know all of us have probably read, you know, this kind of like speed reading. I, I need to read through the, the 24th chapter of Matthew or, you know, three or four chapters, you know, my daily reading, you read through it, and you shut the Bible, and you put it back there, and you turn this way, and you go, what did I just read, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I know we've all done that, but I, those are really great moments when Holy Spirit would just pause you and say, well, wait a minute, and that, that was just really a blessing to me, because I know that feeling, like, that is a Holy Spirit pause right there to stop us and get us to dig a little bit deeper in something, and there's a reason for it, and you brought that before us. So, so I really appreciate that. Someone else have a little testimony tonight. We've got a couple more minutes. Yes, Slim. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, we can be the lion that we live, but we can be the lion that we Mm-hmm. Mm 
Amen. Yeah. Yes, for sure. Anybody else? All done. All right. Well, this has been good. I, I think tonight was terrific. I think the, the message was really, really good. You know, uh, I, I have several. Do you, does anyone have life verses? You know what I mean by that? Verses that just are very special to your life. And I call those life verses. It's like, the, you know, there's certain verses that I just, I've written down. When I read them, it's just like those are very, very personal. And when you were saying, you know, uh, the longing that God has for us and what do we long for, it reminded me of Psalms 42. You know, that, that, that's a really powerful life verse for me. It's talking about the deer that is thirsty for the water. And David said that. He said, as the, as the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs for you, O oh God. So that's, uh, that's a blessing. <clears throat> anyway, this is a good uh, start. Uh, next week, of course, one more time, we just want to remind everybody, let's meet together at 6 o'clock over at um, Pizza Plus and have great fellowship. I'm going to see if we can have a little bit of singing in there. I'll, I'll go and see the brother tomorrow and see if he would mind if we sing a couple songs in there. And then let's just, let's just show... Let's pray and show the love of God. Pray for the anointing to hit and show the kindness. And who knows what the Lord will do with that. These little things sometimes is, is the catalyst to get someone on their journey to the Lord. And so let's hope and pray that that's what happens. So that'll be that this next Wednesday. We'll be gathered over there at 6 p.m. Okay. And Daniel did a fantastic job. Wow. <clears throat> wow, that was incredible. Amen. So let's stand together tonight. And Joel did a great job of harmonizing back there. Joel, thank you for playing drums and harmonizing for us. Amen. Amen. You know, um, I appreciate each and every one of you. It's, it's just a great thing uh, to draw close as brothers and sisters in these days in which we're living. And so have an opportunity to hear other people talk a little bit and share what God is doing to the life. That, that takes on added emphasis uh, for me. So uh, let's have a closing prayer tonight. And uh, I'm going to ask uh, Eric. Eric, would you mind? Would you go ahead and close us in prayer tonight? Amen. <laughs>